When students graduate high school and they begin entering college, there's a lot of pressure on these kids to declare a major. 18, 19 years old, we are loaning these kids thousands of dollars, asking them to make a career decision that will impact the rest of their lives. College system's kind of backwards when you think about it, but that's a discussion for another video. There are plenty of majors to choose from. In the business program alone, you got business management, marketing, accounting, finance, engineering, the medical field, art, science, math, theology, psychology. I mean, the options are endless. Some of these career fields are worth the money. Others, to be honest with you, others are a complete waste of time and money. Over the last few years, there has been a new major introduced on college campuses. There's been a new field created in the business sector. Woke U campuses across the country, they have adopted this curriculum. If you're talented enough to make it in this field, well, talented is the wrong word. It takes absolutely no talent to do this. If you have a complete lack of integrity, if you have no moral standing, if you are willing to exploit people, in many cases, if you're willing to exploit your own community, your own people, you can make a very good living for yourself. Well, Casey, what business are we talking about? Sign me up! I'm talking about the business of mythical racism. The business of mythical racism, and this is just my own estimate, but the business of mythical racism is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Black Lives Matter alone was given 90 million in 2020. 90 million! How many black lives did that money improve? Three, the founders of the organization. Shit fucks like the wicked wig of the woke, Joy Reid, and the creator of mythical racism curriculum, Jamel Hill. They make millions of dollars every year exploiting their own people. As always, you don't have to take my word for it, KC always comes with the proof. Ron DeSantis is running for re-election in Florida, an election that I think he should easily win. I really like Ron DeSantis. He reminds me of kind of a, kind of a toned down version of Donald Trump, which is a good thing. A report was released last week stating Ron DeSantis is growing in popularity with Latino voters, especially in Miami-Dade County, which Miami-Dade County hasn't voted for a Republican for governor in 20 years. Now, this is frightening news for the shit fucks. The Hispanic community, it's one of their many marginalized groups. It's one of the many groups they exploit to further their many narratives. Latino men can get pregnant too. Male pregnancy isn't exclusive to the evil white man. Now, normal people, we look at this data for what it is, a political candidate appealing to a certain demographic. But you have to look at this report through the mind of a shit fuck. As you guys know, there's only one way to do this. We have to put on our woke hat. Now we're going to start with Jamel Hill, then we'll check out the wig. According to Smelly Jamelli, the reason Ron DeSantis is popular amongst Latino voters has nothing to do with his policies. No, 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 no. Come on, guys. The Hispanic community, they don't like things like their kids going to school. They don't enjoy freedom. They want endless lockdowns, mandated masks, covering the faces of the hideous and deplorable. According to Jamel Hill, Ron DeSantis, he's popular with Latino voters because of their proximity to whiteness. The oppressed are taking on the traits of their oppressor. Let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. The last I checked, leaders of Woke United Methodists, they support open borders. They love illegal immigrants. Of course, they don't want these illegal immigrants in their backyards. They only love them when they're in your state. Fly these same people to New York City, every hotel suddenly has no vacancy. Most of these illegal immigrants, they are coming from Hispanic countries. So if I'm understanding this correctly, they're leaving oppression in places like Honduras, Venezuela, to travel all the way to America to be oppressed? Does that make sense to you? Is American oppression better than Venezuelan oppression? Did the United States suddenly monopolize the oppression industry? These people manufacture so much bullshit, so much propaganda, they can't even keep up with it themselves. Jamel Hill, she's in the middle of a book tour right now. 
Her memoir was released yesterday. It is the tragic story of an educated female birthing person failing to make a name for herself in sports media. Twelve years working at ESPN, she was only known as a modest failure until one day Jamel Hill discovered the golden cucumber. Juanita Hill became Jamel Hill and began sharing tragic stories of mythical racism. She eventually found success competing with fellow butt brigader Bamani Jones for the title of huge embarrassing failure. This encyclopedia of mythical racism is being heavily promoted in the mainstream media. All the biggest shit fucks have given the molehill rave reviews. What do normal people think about it? I wish I could tell you, but as of 11.30 this morning, not one person, not one, has reviewed this book on Amazon. I would imagine by this time next week, we'll be talking about bookstores being overstocked with this book, begging people with unbalanced tables to purchase a copy of it. Jamel Hill, she's doing her damnedest to convince people to buy this table proper. Now let's think about this for a minute. If I was trying to convince you to balance your table, how would I go about doing so? This book will surely balance your tables, your chairs. It will even balance the tires on your electric car. It will even balance your equilibrium if you're prone to falling like our fearless leader, Bumbling Biden. How did Smelly Jamelly decide to promote her book of bongo? <laughs> Watch for yourself. The question I was often asked as I was going through the controversy after saying what I said about Donald Trump, about him being a, a white supremacist, everybody mm -hmm. around me was sort of freaking out, like, oh, do you know what this means? And um, the, the target that is now on your back, and I certainly understood that, yes, it, it put a particular target, target on my back, especially once the White House addressed these comments. But when I think about the scope of my life and everything that I've been through, Donald Trump coming after me, the White House uh, coming after me, former um, uh, press secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders saying I deserve to be fired. It wouldn't even rank in the top 20 of worst things <laughs> that I've experienced or that have happened to me or some of my worst moments or most trying moments that I, I've had to, um, you know, really go through. So I got to wondering how this promotional tactic was working for the odorous wonder. Jamel Hill? Jamel Hill, she doesn't sniff the top 100 books sold, not the top 200, not even the top 300. She ranks 342nd. I guess race baiting isn't popular with normal America. Now let's get to the wicked wig. My boo boo, my boo boo, Joy Reid. How did she explain the popularity of Ron DeSantis amongst Latino voters? Check it out for yourself. As you can see by her Twitter handle, Joy Reid wakes up every morning faced with daunting choices. She not only has to figure out her hair, she also has to figure out which Kobe mask matches best with her outfit. According to Joy Reid, it's those damn proud boys. Ooh, those evil white men. They're brainwashing our marginalized groups. For the last two years, this evil, evil woman has used mythical racism for her own personal gain. Joy Reid is a race hustler. Five nights a week, she looks for people to marginalize. She looks for people to victimize. She exploits them on national television. She also looks for people to demonize. I'll show you an example of that in just a second. When Joy Reid premiered her rotation of wigs two years ago on MSNBC, she was a rating smash. During the summer of 2020, she was averaging 2 million viewers every night. Check out her ratings the last four months. Last month. She had a record low 800,000 viewers. Over the last four months, only 1.1 million are tuning in to see which hair color will be presented. Where did all those people go? Where did 1.9, no, not 1.9, where did 900,000 people go in the span of two years? I thought America loved a good victim story. True crime, it's one of the most popular podcasting genres. Here we have Joy Reid on a nightly basis, highlighting mythical victims across America. How come fewer and fewer people are tuning in? Let me show you an example of the stark difference between real America and woke America. Last month, the state of Florida was hit by a major hurricane. Now, what are some of the primary concerns when you're recovering from a storm, especially immediately after? 
relief money, aid from FEMA, restoring power to everybody's home, and last, but certainly not least, looting. Criminals tend to take advantage after hurricanes. Now, I'm about to show you two different speeches, one from Ron DeSantis, one from bumbling Biden. You tell me, which one of these men or male birthing persons, which one is more in touch with the average American? Roll the film. The other thing that we're concerned about, particularly in those areas that were really hard hit, is, you know, we want to make sure we're maintaining law and order. Uh, don't even think about looting. Don't even think about taking advantage of people in this vulnerable uh, situation. And so local law enforcement is involved in, 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 in monitoring that. You know, I told Kevin if the state needs to help as well, uh, because you, know, you can have people, you know, bringing boats into some of these islands and trying to ransack people's homes. Um, I can tell you in the state of Florida, uh, you never know what may be lurking behind somebody's home. And I would not want to chance that if I were you, given that we're a Second Amendment state. Room as that takes up. And the reservoirs out west are, are, are down to almost zero. We're in a situation where the Colorado River looks more like a stream. There's a lot going on. And I think the one thing this has finally ended is a discussion about whether or not there's climate change. We should do something about it. Did you see the face? Did you see the face of Ron DeSantis when Joe Biden was talking about fucking climate change? Did you see it? His face says it all. This dude doesn't have a clue. Ron DeSantis, he issued a warning to criminals. He basically gave law-abiding citizens the go-ahead. If someone breaks into your home, do what you gotta do. Guess what Joy Reid accused him of? Just take a wild guess. She accused Ron DeSantis of mythical racism. He's telling white people it's okay to shoot a starving black man looking to feed his family. His kids are hungry. They are starving. They need those new shoes so they can walk to find food. They need that stolen TV so they know which grocery store is having a sale. This is another example of the blatant hypocrisy and propaganda of Joy Reid. I don't remember Ron DeSantis saying all looters are black. From what I can tell, Joy Reid jumped to that conclusion, the conclusion that all looters are black. So you tell me, who is the mythical racist? The truth is the business of mythical racism is on the decline. The country's tired of the bullshit. If promoting mythical racism was popular, Jamel Hill... She would not only have the number one book, she would have the number one podcast in America. Instead, her book is being used for barrel fires in the dump, and her podcast is so popular, I couldn't find its ranking. Joy Reid airs in primetime every night. Now, primetime's only a three-hour window, three shows. Yet, for some reason, she's only the sixth most watched show on her own network and she routinely ranks outside the top 150 on cable. Don't even get me started in the coveted demos. Joy Reid is a ratings disaster in the 25 to 54 demographic. I guess it turns out only older people and young children are fascinated by changing hair color. But let me know what you think. Is the business of mythical racism on the decline? Give me your prediction. How many books will Jamel Hill sell this week? We talked about some other shit fucks book sales last weekend. I, I can't remember what their name was. It was some pirate pounder. But anyway, they barely sold a thousand books in two weeks. I actually think Jamel Hill will do better than that. But what is your prediction? 5,000? 10,000? 20,000? 50,000? 1 million? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.